before your party started with the flow of the three four. If you heard me before, that's great. Or you might not. Hello everybody, Christopher 164 here and I'm here with Peabod! Hello! He's here at Liberty University and and he's about to do a concert and we're super excited about that. Now it's during the summer and when I saw he was coming I'm like, no way, it's super cool, it's pretty cool. We see Liberty bringing in some popular Christian artists oftentimes and sometimes some alter alternative people, but not all the time new and rising people. And so to see Peabot here is super incredible and super amazing. So welcome to Liberty. Thank you. Appreciate it. So Thank how you. long have you been on campus? A uh, few hours, three few hours, hours. <laughs> something saw, like that. I saw you went to the tower. How was that? It was cool. It was super cool. We didn't get to go up all the way. I think they're painting or something. Okay. okay. But we got like pretty high up. That's so. last time I went there was a couple, about a month ago. Same oh, deal. Cool. So gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Floor. Yeah, super cool though. Yeah. Anywhere else you've been able to see? Or? We kind of just drove around campus because um, we went to, we got in like super late last night, so mm -hmm. we slept in as long as we could. For sure. That three hour time difference from Seattle to here is, is a big deal. We were like eating lunch, but it's like breakfast time <laughs> for us. So we, I was eating like a sandwich and drinking coffee. It was weird, yeah. but it was, they were both good. So Well, that's what's important, right? Yeah, exactly. So I have a question. Is that shirt custom made or you found it somewhere? You I really found like it at Urban Outfitters. Okay. Shout out Urban Outfitters. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you want to rock a watermelon shirt, they probably have it. Match the Yep. Other than that, we're half matching. Same time. Yeah, there you go. Dress. Yep. I just didn't bring it out today. I was thinking about it, but okay. it's okay. <laughs> Obviously, you're known as a rapper, mm -hmm. but you're also a multi-talented musician from what I've seen. <laughs> I mean, like, really, like, n no offense to other rappers, but oftentimes they got their DJ and maybe drummer, mm -hmm. but they're up there rapping from pictures right. I've seen. You're almost Tyler Joseph-ish, you know? Mm -hmm. You got the bass at the very least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Banjo, right? Uh, ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah, banjo so, would be cool. That would be cool. Maybe one of these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That sounds very uh, like Judah and the Lion banjo mm -hmm. rap stuff. But I actually haven't really heard much of Judah and the Lion. Oh, actually, any, any. So one of these days, they're on my list. Yeah, so, long cool. list. So, what got you into just music in general? Yeah, um, I mean, I've always loved music. I started taking piano lessons when I was in like second grade and. Mm -hmm. Um, for a long time, that was kind of just like, um, I don't know, something that my parents wanted me to do, but um, picked up the bass guitar in middle school, and I was like, this is a rock and roll instrument. <laughs> and so that's when I really felt like, okay, I want to be in like a band and play music. And um, through middle school and high school, I feel like the whole time I was like, I, I want to be in a band. I want, you know, I don't even want to be the lead guy, but every band I was in like flaked out before we ever like wrote a song or played a show and mm -hmm. 
So it eventually got to the point where I was like, I just really want to do music, so I'm going to do this myself. And so I um, started writing in high school, and at first it was um, kind of bluesy, and um, I, I wrote folk songs for a really long time before switching to hip-hop. What's your favorite genre, mm. specifically, or are you just very well-rounded, and you just like everything? I mean, I think everyone likes to say they listen to everything. You know, right. that's like the popular like, answer. Right. I laugh at everything. Oh, I listen that. to everything. I laugh at people. Yeah, that. But, um, I really, I mean, I try to because I, I'm of the belief that the more diverse your selection of music is that you listen to, the more unique your own music will be. Because yeah. if, um, you know, there's a lot of hip hop out there where it's like um, everyone is just listening to Migos and like all the trap guys and so of course their music's gonna sound like that not a bad thing necessarily but um, there's people like um, oh I forget who it was I think uh, Quincy Jones did an interview where he was saying like like I'm listening to like pop stuff but then like Brazilian music and all these different kinds of music and uh, you know he's obviously one of the greatest producers of all time so um, my favorites, though, I love hip hop. Obviously, I love folk music. I love like the new kind of um, '80s indie stuff that's coming back, like Saint Lucia, 1975, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't know, just good old pop music too. Right. I thought I thought Lauren Daigle's new album was incredible. Obviously. Not to just like throw it out there because like <laughs> we're on the same label, but right. like it was so good. That's so far away. The future never worried me. We were just kids with Game Boys and backpacks, spending our time with hot. Yeah, so um, bass is my main instrument, but I play guitar too, um, okay. and so th those are kind of my main two instruments, so I usually write from that. Um, and then I play ukulele, a little bit of keys, enough to like record tracks, but right. um, I don't usually play keys live. Um, so, and then obviously I can sing and rap and stuff, so right. um, I'd like to learn more things, but For sure. that's, that's my wheelhouse right now. Well, you so. got a life ahead of you, so. Yep, exactly. How old exactly. are you? I'm 25. 25, yeah. yeah. Yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, or else the Raptors come yeah. out. So we'll see. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, why folk music? First, uh, I don't know. I think, you know, in high school, honestly, I was listening to a lot of like um, alt rock, like almost screamo, but not quite. You know, I think like, like red, like red, or like Seosin or uh, Amberlin, like all of those bands that most of which aren't around anymore. But um, there was like a solid. Era, I felt like from like 2005 to like 2000, kind of 11 or 12, where it was like that was like the genre. It's like everyone was listening to like this really hard rock, and so I love that. But um, in I I was writing on acoustic guitar a lot of the time, even though um, that was kind of what I was listening to, just because I love the like authenticity of an acoustic guitar. You pick it up yeah. and like you just hear it, and it's like all of the natural sounds from the, the wood and so I love that it's like the sound you're getting is from the instrument itself and not from effects or an amp as right. much as electric guitar is awesome. <laughs> um, so I was playing that a lot and then um, two, two things that I started listening to a lot were John Foreman's solo stuff mm -hmm. that originally came out in 2008 and he's put out more since then. But, okay. um, and then Mumford and Sons was a big deal for me because they started right. making music and uh, 2010 or something like that. Um, so those, I was blown away because I've been listening to Switchfit for years. They're one of my favorites. And so mm -hmm. John Foreman's solo stuff sounding so different, but very him was intriguing me. And then Mumford and Sons being a folk band, but having huge radio success, I was like, this is so cool that a banjo can be on the radio. Like, right. so, um, I never picked up a banjo, but, um, <laughs> one these days, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll see. <laughs> but it, it did give me an appreciation for, um, for really acoustic driven music and so I started leaning into that more and um, it just felt 
it felt authentic, and so I wrote folk music for a long time. And I still write the occasional folk song, because right. I love it. But So as Peabod, mm-hmm. you, do you plan to like, maybe incorporate the occasional folk song? Is yeah, I'll, it fresh? I'll do one tonight, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's Old a, or new? Uh, old, yeah, okay. off, off Indigo. Um, so there, there's a moment in the set where um, I have my song Steady, which is about my fiance. And oh, so you're engaged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yep, okay. I'm engaged. Awesome. Yep, as of May, so that's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's great. Is there a song about that or something? Yeah, so Steady is about her. Oh, okay. um, And then there's a song that I wrote like right at the beginning of when we started dating called mm-hmm. Lullaby that's um, one of the folk songs. So I'll play that before Steady and that'll be like my sappy moment That's in the concert. Cool. So. <laughs> yep. So, so if you're watching, love you. <laughs> I'm sure she probably will. She yeah, will. she she watches everything. She's very supportive. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey! If we play this right, we can be together by the summertime. The summertime. The summertime. When they say it like that, it feels like we're never till the summertime. Summertime. The summertime. Summertime. You started with folk, and then now hip hop, which is kind of. Very different. Very different, but then, like, how you do hip-hop is very different how everyone else does mm-hmm. hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Just from the sounds, like, obviously, Summer of Fletcher, mm-hmm. one of my favorite tracks, and just, like, you know, utilizes that guitar, mm-hmm. and you're rapping over the guitar beat, and, like, of course, there's a basic drum beat to it, but, sure. like, very innovative and creative, mm-hmm. at the very least from what Thanks. I've heard, and, I, and I'm sure most other people can say the same. So... So why did you choose hip hop, and then how yeah. did your hip hop become you? Yeah, oh, that's a great question. Um, so, I mean, I made the I had been listening to hip hop for a long time. Around the same time that I started listening to folk, I started listening to a lot of hip hop too. But folk was felt like a more natural transition because I was already playing guitar and stuff, and I didn't think of myself as a rapper. Right. But I was listening to a lot of hip hop music, and especially in college, like dove really deep into hip hop music. Um, and so I was making beats for fun sometimes, but I wasn't showing them to anybody. And um, I wrote Dreamin', which is on the album in like 2014, just for fun. Um, I was working like a front desk job, and there would be these long periods where I like didn't have anything to do because no one would be making phone calls, and so I would just like write lyrics. And um, but I I really made the switch to doing like the thing as Peabody and not Isaac Peabody right. when. Um, when I made Summer Fletcher, um, I live in a house with four dudes, and at the time, I was living with a guy named Fletcher, and one of my other roommates said, Fletcher's just like a very, he's like such a character, um, just like super like great friend, but also just hilarious, and so one of my other roommates was like, you should write a song about Fletcher, so so I did, Summer Fletcher happened, um, I released it, we made a video, and people were like, you should do more of this, do more of the hip-hop stuff, and um, at first I was like, huh, people are like latching onto this more than the folk stuff that I've been doing, which at first felt really weird, but then I was like, well, maybe there's something to it. And I really enjoyed it. I had so much fun making that track. So um, I started thinking about it. And for a long time, I was like, no one would take me seriously as a rapper. Like, you don't look at me and go, that guy's a rapper. <laughs> I had one person tell me that once, and I was like, really? uh. <laughs> but um, Must have been the hat. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. Um, but yeah, so I, I started thinking about like, what if being taken seriously wasn't the point? What if it was just super fun? And um, I love some of the like, you know, heavier hip hop, but there's, you know, it hits a point where it's like, oh, I just want something like lighthearted and fun. And yeah. so I was like, what if I, what if I just made that? And mm-hmm. so I so started working on the album and um, kind of branded it as happy hip hop. And um, I think through writing it, at first it was going to be really satirical, yeah. like um, kind of making fun of hip hop. But as I wrote it, I was like, this actually feels really sincere to who I am, just like having fun and enjoying music and trying to be creative and um, and diving into the joy that I have for my faith. And so, um, so one, when I wrote the intro, a peaceful introduction, which is the first song I wrote for the album. Um, that was when I was like, okay, there's something here. I think I get it. And the vil- like vision kind of developed as I went along. Sometimes the world's just a little too much. So you play a sad song to cheer yourself up and tell yourself that you were okay. Say it on me, okay, okay. So who's someone that, like, people often ask dream collaborator, and I'll ask that yeah. as well. But also, like, who's 
I guess someone more within your reach that you think you'd be collaborating more in the mm. near future. Mm -hmm. So dream collaborator and one who, who you think might be collaborating yeah. with soon. And excited like exciting like soon possibility. Kind yeah, of thing. exactly. Because yeah. dream collaborator most of the time it's probably not going to happen. Sadly. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, I mean, dream collaborator would probably be like. I don't know, like Chance the Rapper or something. Right. I love Chance. He, Chance is the first time I heard Joy in hip hop, so hit, he mm. was a big influence in in my album um, for sure. But um, uh, like soon collaboration, I've been talking a little bit, just a little bit with Marty from Social Club, so that's been fun. So hopefully there will be something there at some point. Um, cool. And uh, I don't know. There's another band. I don't know if this is actually realistic, but mm -hmm. um, have you heard of the band Wolfpack? No. They're like a, oh, Kelsey does both back <laughs> behind the camera, you can't see her, but um, they're like a, they're like a funk band and they, uh, it's, it's called minimalist funk and so uh -huh. everything is just so tight and I think it would work really well with hip hop. They haven't done anything hip hop and they have actually a pretty big platform now, like, right. you know, when John Mayer follows you, you're doing pretty well. Right. So. Um, well, again, like just the merge of genres. Yes. And then like, honestly, even like with if you do something with Chance, like, you know, I've only heard a couple of his songs, but, you know, it, that sonically would kind of fall more like, okay, yeah, that's hip-hop when I right. think totally Peabody, namely, I always think Summer of Pleasure, like, that's different. <laughs> so, <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, so I don't know, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Right. Um, so that's kind of, Wolfpack's kind of in between dream and realistic. Okay. Coca-Cola. Yes. Explain. I need this. Like, yes. I, I don't. So, for, I mean, like, for me, soda, uh, sorry, Coca-Cola and Pepsi is the same. Oh, uh, it's not. It's really not. Here's Explain the thing. to me. Okay, so. I need to educate me. I grew up only drinking Coke. Like, my, my whole family is this way. Um, um, funny, because I lived in uh, South Korea for seven years, and they're like, get the Coke, and they bring out Pepsi. Or just, yep. Yep. I, it's funny. Yeah. Well, okay. Let me put it this way. When you go to a restaurant, okay. nine times out of ten, if you say, I'll have a Coke, if they don't have Coke, they're going to say, is Pepsi okay? You'll never, you'll rarely hear someone say, can I have a Pepsi? And they'll go, is Coke okay? You know what I'm saying? Interest. It's, it's usually like... Or I don't go to restaurants enough. There's, there's a, a preference for Coke that's generally accepted. I'd also say Coca-Cola is the world's drink. There are more countries around the world that drink Coke than Pepsi. It's like the sponsor of the World Cup. So it's a, I, I'd say I like what Coke is about, and I think it tastes better. So, so what is Coke about that Pepsi isn't? <laughs> I think Coke's whole thing is about like community and like togetherness, and um, I don't know. They they do a lot of really cool thing with uh, like a, a lot of cool things with nonprofits and mm -hmm. um, and. You know, their tagline is open happiness, so it even fits with, like, the Peabody vibe. It's right. very much like a, a Coke commercial is going to be, like, some sort of creating a moment of joy for somebody else around, like, a bottle of Coke or whatever. Interesting. Um, Pepsi, I feel like, is a lot of, like, I don't know. I is just feel like just trying to catch up. A name, do you feel? Do you feel like it's just a name? Because like I, I think it tastes better, too. But Which? Uh, Coke. Coca-Cola. Coca but, I mean, like... Because, like, I don't really follow with the, the <laughs> soda culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm not... Deep into soda culture. <laughs> so, like, I don't really pay attention too much about the commercials, advertisements, yeah. uh, type of marketing. I don't even know who Kylie Jenner did the commercial with. <laughs> Wait, who it, was was it? it was with Pepsi. Pepsi. Okay, so yeah. maybe that's a reason. No, I don't know. <laughs> but... I also think what, what what ignites your taste buds about Coca Cola and what like kills you with Pepsi? Like, I don't is know. Is there something you can explain? Because I, I I'm still like. A well, I think it. I don't know. Part of it, like, I know people who are hardcore in the Pepsi camp, and I like I respect them for it because okay. it's like holding true to like your preference. Right. At the end of the day, it is a preference. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like because. It, I don't know, it's not like one kind of music is objectively better than another. Perfect. Like, even though I'm not a huge country music fan, I see Chris Stapleton and I love his stuff, and I'm like, I can't argue that, like, Chance is a more talented human than Chris Stapleton, because they're doing right. such different things. 
but a hip hop fan and a country fan could duke it out all day and be like, no, this is better, this is better. So on the one hand, like if someone's like super pro Pepsi, I'll have a I'll have an argument with them just for fun. Right. But like at the end of the day, I respect that I respect that they right. like Pepsi more. I think I don't think they're right, but <laughs> so if the restaurant didn't have Coca Cola, I'd have water. Okay. Yep. Not that. I mean, I might have like Seven Up or something. Okay. People get really into like okay, that's, that's another thing. Seven Up and Sprite. Is there a difference? Or or probably. I'm, I mean, I'm, so I'm more. I'm much more concerned with the cola. Okay. You know what I mean? But like, no one's gonna argue that Mr. Pibb is better than Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Pepper's kind of its own thing now. Okay. That, no, give me my cream soda. <laughs> <laughs> cream soda is awesome. Cream soda is actually my go-to soda. So. But I think, and you know, I think this is where it gets into the kind of the same genre thing. Like, mm -hmm. people are like, well, Coke or Dr. Pepper. I'm like, they're different. I'm not gonna, Coke and Pepsi, I can make that argument. They're both colas. But like Coke and Sprite, it's like, you're not even drinking the same thing. So. Right, makes sense. Yeah. So. So Sprite's great. Root Root beer? great. Root beer's great. Okay, okay. Yeah. Root beer's great too, okay. Um, and then also, uh, I don't know the difference between Birch and Root beer, except I think Birch is better. That's it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Birch, Birch is good. This thing was marvelous. And when the sun sets, we will tell the love of your life. Let's open happiness. Cause you know that tonight is the sweetest day of your life. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know that tonight is the sweetest moment for life. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know that tonight is the sweetest moment for life. There's a big old debate about. Mm -hmm. Or something. It's like I, I'm sure you are aware of it. You wouldn't really be considered a secular rapper, but you're mm -hmm. not. If one would tag you as a CHH rapper, you wouldn't be a typical CHH person. Sure. Yeah. And so obviously you make mention a few times in the songs, like you mm -hmm. are a Christian, and but it's not like what people say, you know, look crazy rebel or something, and sure. like. I was looking at some of the comments of the Summer Fletcher, and was like, oh, I didn't mention God that much. I'm like, first off, that's just one song. Second yeah. off, that doesn't speak much of the person. Like, there's arguments, and like, yeah. I see both sides. Like, I do see the need that, yes, we need to go out and evangelize, but also, we're a body of believers, and we each have different parts. There yeah, are universal absolutely. commands, but there are specific callings. Yep. How do you see yourself in the puzzle of hip-hop and CHH? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and it's something I think about a lot, because, um, again, when I made this album, I made it for fun. Like, right. I'm like, I'm gonna make a fun album with my friends. So that was my initial goal. Um, now that I am signed to a record label and thinking about moving this to being my full-time career, hopefully, awesome. um, it there's more of a weight to it. Um, I knew when I was making the album for fun that I didn't want to make a whole album without if someone listened to the whole album, I didn't want there to be a doubt in their minds like, oh, this guy loves Jesus. Like, I wanted that to be obvious. And it is. There's, you know, two or three mentions. It's like, right. very specific, like, yes, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. This is what I'm about. Um, that said, I think, and this is not, I don't say this to, like, point fingers at any specific artist or genre even, right. but I felt like growing up um, and getting into Christian music, there was a part of me that felt like... Um, there was some stigma that every single song had to say Jesus this many times or had to rap about this much theology. Right. And a lot of those songs were excellent. Some of them weren't. And I feel like there was this part of me that was like, you know, kids in youth groups sometimes just want to have fun too. Sometimes you just want to sing a song about Coca-Cola <laughs> and enjoy the joy that comes from music and thank God for that joy. Right. Um, so my, I guess, kind of, mission statement um that's not like a formulated statement but right. the idea Under development that, yeah <laughs> sure the idea that kind of drives keybod as a um i guess brand um for sure I is mean, that once you're an artist you are a brand sure yeah um i think is that the the joy that we receive from knowing jesus i want that to be evident in every single song i do and that means, like, if, if my faith is really in Jesus and I really believe the gospel, then that, that's true for me, 
then I can take joy in the things he's created, like like having an awesome relationship with my roommates or having a fun day in the summer with Coca-Cola. Like those are good things that I can enjoy and there's a sweetness to that joy because I know Jesus and I know that my joy isn't found in those things, but I can live in them more because of that. Does that make sense? It, it so does. I, I think mean, that I feel like, uh, sorry. No, no, I, it's fine. Go ahead. I feel like um, I I never want there to be a doubt. Like I am absolutely a Christian rapper. I right. love the Lord. And that's like my, my main goal would be for people to be encouraged and for people to meet Jesus because of it. Right. Um, a tertiary goal would be to have as much fun as possible. Right. And so I think... Um, I'm, I'm not gonna follow like specific guidelines like, oh, you didn't mention X in this song. Right. This specific theological concept isn't on that album. I think like that's what interviews are for. That's what meeting me in person is yeah. for. Um, and I, so I wanna provide fun music and encouraging music that points to Jesus in both ways. So. That's awesome. I hope you walk out of here tonight feeling encouraged. Enjoying having fun with your friends. I saw you all dancing back here. It was wonderful. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. You feel so good. Um, but what I hope you most of all walk out here uh, with tonight is that Jesus loves you very much. I know you go to a Christian school, but sometimes that, you know, people saying it all the time, it's stale. But um, my prayer for you as you go into the weekend, as you go into your churches and sleep in and whatever, um, that you would just know deeply that uh, His grace is enough that his gospel is truth and that he loves you very, very much. One last thing, your music is more geared to millennials and college mm -hmm. kids. Any college advice for them? Oh man, uh, maybe like don't date someone your first semester. No. <laughs> if, if they're the one, then great, then right. we'll know. Um, I don't know, I think uh, accepting that like growing up is really hard and that's okay. And that also there can be some really, really fun things about it. Becoming independent is like so weird because there are moments where you're like, this is so hard, I've never done this by myself. There's no, there's no adult to come around and like fix this for me. And that happens even more when you graduate. Um, but also there's this like, I have some like, I don't know, I guess control of like what, what I'm gonna do. And so um, I'd say like really enjoy the the parts of college life that are like just so good like right. you'll never live on a floor with like 50 other dudes again in your life unless and you're a commuter like sure you. yeah but even then like th you'll never have like this community all exactly. in one place it is very different you don't interact with people this way outside of college and totally. it is a beautiful experience totally so i'd say like soak that up as much as you can because everyone when they graduate goes oh, i really miss X about college, and usually it's the people. Yeah. But then also, like, know that it's okay when things are really hard because growing up is super hard. And so, so ask for help, talk to your friends about it because they probably are in the same boat. Everyone likes to think that they have it figured out, but no one really does. No. I for sure don't, so if <laughs> other people do, maybe they can help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is Peabod. Check out his debut mixtape through Century City Records. Show love and support if you like it. Show him even more love. If you don't like it, maybe tell your friends who like some Don't tell me. I'm fragile. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, he'll, he'll be like repeating okay in this car for like an yeah. and then yep. maybe you're okay for Crunching a lot. Or yeah, <laughs> okay, okay you're on today. Haters, <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a great day and God bless. Okay, like and subscribe, do all the things. <laughs> that said, we got uh, we got one more song, and I'm gonna invite Cam and Josh back up here. Come on, give him a hand. And one of our most dramatic crew that wants to be on stage. This song is called Shoot From The Hip. Liberty, you've been wonderful. Thank you for hanging out. Let's do this thing.